Yes, you. Welcome to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast, a podcast for people who want to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. I'm your host, Jen Glantz, and every week I'll drop a new episode with stories from real people just like you who woke up one morning and decided to make big changes, starting with small things. We'll cover topics like entrepreneurship, love, failure, and self-care. Hey, you're not getting any younger, so let's make this an adventure. Ready? Today's episode is brought to you by Jen and Juice Coaching by yours truly. For the past five years, I've worked with over 100 people to help them feel, well, less stuck. Whether you're looking to change careers, start a side hustle, or just get a strategy for your life, head on over to jenglance.com slash coaching and you can find out about my one-hour coaching specials that will help you feel like you can finally cross those things off your to-do list and start whatever kind of project, life change, or dream that you have. Hey, hey, any youngers, it's me, your host, Jen Glanz, back with another episode of the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. How in the world are you, my friend? Here we are, sitting in the middle of the month of May. I've started to send these emails and these messages to people for quarter three you know like in the business world we go we do things by quarters so I've been sending all these these pitches and things for quarter three and I thought to myself how are we already almost halfway through the year halfway through the year and if you sit there and put that in perspective you start to think about oh my goodness gracious Am I doing what I wanted to do and promised myself I would do in the beginning of the year? Have I made progress on things? Am I the same old lazy procrastinator that entered the year 2021 and promised this year would be different? I've just been asking my, myself those things quite regularly as I start to realize that we are almost halfway done with this year and a lot of the things I really, really, really wanted to accomplish I haven't even started. I've been really good so far this year, organizing things, getting more into having systems and, you know, making progress on existing things and projects that I, I've been working on for a while. But a big thing I wanted to do this year was start a lot of new things. And those things are still inside of my draft folder. I thought about something interesting the other day, which is that all of us are hiding something. You know what I'm talking about. We're hiding something. One of the fastest ways to know what a person is hiding is to take their phone, with permission of course, and to look at all the things they have not done. Look at the missed calls and the voicemails of people they've never called back. Look at the text messages that have gone unanswered. Look inside of their draft folder in their email and see all of the emails they have not found the courage to send. That is what I want to talk about today. What is it that you are hiding? Because we are all hiding something. And these are things that we've been procrastinating on. These are things we're avoiding. These are things we are putting off for a better time, a time when we're ready, the time when the world allows us to be ready, all of these things. But the truth is, and this is something that I've been thinking about so much this week, is that the more we hide these things, the more the world will not care and the world will keep going on, time will keep going on and we will never ever do the things we know we need to do. I hear this quite often from a lot of people that I do some one-on-one coaching with. They'll say things like, yeah, you know, I had a list of jobs I wanted to apply for and then when I finally got the courage to apply for them three months later, they weren't up anymore. The jobs were taken. And it's like, of course, because when we want something, we think we have all of the time in the world. We wait, we wait, we wait, but then we go to pursue it finally, many months or years later, and it's no longer an option. It's no longer available. And then we have to start back at the starting line again. And that takes a lot of work. So number one, I ask you as we approach the middle of another month of May, almost halfway through the year, to sit back, relax, and identify what you've been putting off. What are you hiding? 
I started writing a fiction book in 2018, and it was a fiction book inspired by real life events of mine, but I wanted to make it fictionalized. And I wrote like 70 pages of it. I sent it to my book agent, and she wanted me to make all of these revisions. And I made those revisions, and then she wanted me to make more revisions. And then my life got pretty hectic, pretty weird, pretty odd, and I just stopped. You know, I was in the zone writing this book, I was so passionate about it, but then things happened, and I just stopped. Well, for the rest of 2019, for most of 2020, that draft of that fiction book has existed on my desktop, but I've been too scared to even open it. And I think what scares me the most is just the daunting task of taking 70 pages of a book I started and continuing on with it, which is a hard thing to explain because writing, which is a lot like other things in life, You get good at writing when you're in the zone, when you've built the muscle, when you've sat down and done it day after day after day. But when you've taken a hiatus or a break or a temporary pause, going back to it is just really, really hard. And a goal of mine this year isn't to finish the book, isn't to make the book amazing. It's to simply open up that Word document and look at it and add to it and see where I want to take this. Now, writing this fiction book is something I want to do. Whether or not anyone wants to publish it or anyone wants to read it, it's a story I want to tell. And it's a challenge for me because I've never written fiction before. I'm a nonfiction writer. It's what I've done my whole life. And this is something completely different for me and my writing skills. And honestly, all the progress I've made so far in 2021 is that I've opened up the Word document. The Word document has permanently been open on my computer since January. And every time I have to restart my computer or my computer shuts down and the document closes, it's the very first thing I pull up. So I'm not going to say that I'm mad at myself that I haven't added to the book or I haven't read very much of the book. I'm honestly proud that I'm lingering in step one because actually opening the book was really, really hard. It took me two years to do that. Now you're thinking, Jen, come on. I can't believe you can't just open the book and get going. But I turned it around to you. What are you hiding? What are you putting off? What is so hard for you to even take that first step? When you answer that question, I ask that you do something about it. And maybe what you do about it is something so little, so tiny, so meaningless, like opening up your resume and not doing anything with it or writing an email that you you know you can't send today, but you will send eventually, or making a list of all the people in your life that you need to call back, or thinking about how you're gonna address that lingering problem in your life that just keeps popping up. What are you hiding and what are you going to do about it? And this is something, again, that I wanna push home because I think for a lot of us, we get really good at hiding things. We get really good at putting things off. And then we also get really, really good at being self-deprecating, at being upset with ourselves. And sometimes when we simply just address what we need to do and not get started, just go through the motions of addressing what we need to do, we will feel so much better. I don't know who needs to hear this, but send that email that's sleeping in your draft folder. You know the one I'm talking about. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but apply for that job you've been eyeballing for weeks and false promising everyone in your life that you will finally apply tomorrow. Guess what, my friend? It is tomorrow. Stop talking yourself out of it. Stop saying you're not qualified. Stop saying it's never going to happen. Just apply. I don't know who needs to hear this, but call that person you've been thinking about and repeat after me. Just say this. Hey. I have been thinking about you and I am so sorry that I haven't reached out sooner. I don't know who needs to hear this, but please start working on that podcast, writing that book, starting that tiny business life isn't slowing down. We're in quarter number three or we're almost in quarter number three. Speed up on the things you crave. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but stop shouting at yourself that you're not good enough, ready enough, buttoned up enough to press that send button, to press that call button. Please just press the go button. Why are you waiting? Why are you hesitating and what are you waiting for? Because whatever you're waiting for is certainly not waiting for you. There's this thing that I really wanted. It was something I was interested in. It was this opportunity to be a guest on this podcast. And 
I've been hearing about this, this opportunity again and again and again. And in the back of my head, I thought, wow, it could be so cool to be chosen for this. But it seemed when I did any type of Google search that it was super hard to figure out how to apply, who to send an application to, like how to reach the host. So for a couple months, I just didn't do anything. But I thought about it constantly and I thought about how much I wanted it, how, how cool it would be. And then the other day I got the courage to just send the email. I sent this email to a random email address I found. I wasn't even sure if anyone would ever see it. I wrote the email, very short, very much so like, hey, here's who I am. Here's why I think I'd be an awesome guest. And if you're interested, let's chat more. The next day I get an email notification from this email tracking I have that says that that email was not opened. And I got this weird feeling that maybe there, that email wasn't right. So I spent the next hour doing some research and figuring out a couple of other email addresses that might lead this email to the right people who are choosing people for this opportunity. I sent that pitch to these email addresses and with a couple of minutes later, I got a response saying that, I, that yes, they would like to have me on the show. And I know that sounds like such an easy process, right? I know it sounds like I got lucky. I know it sounds like so many things, but here's what it really was. It was me finally, after a very, very long time of putting off this, finally applying, finally going at it again, step two of following up or finding a different email and going after something that I really, really wanted. And it looks like I am going to be a guest on this podcast. I'll keep you posted. I'll share what that is later on. But the moral of the story is, A, timing doesn't wait for you, but it can work for you, right? So like when you're applying for a job, if you keep pushing it off, if you keep waiting, that job won't be available. But if you just so happen to send your application in at that exact moment, you actually might have a chance. Someone might be looking that day at all of the resumes. So stop playing with time. Stop putting things off because it is a bit of a gamble. I got really lucky in that aspect, but if I would have waited a month or two, the opportunity wouldn't have been there any longer. And number two, don't try once and give up. And I say that because, you know, even with the fiction book, yeah, I keep it open on my desktop, but eventually I'm going to have to read it. And eventually I'm probably going to read it, freak out, and then stop reading it for a while. But tell yourself it's okay to try, stop, and try again. I think what happens is we try, stop, and get really mad at ourselves and then really just digress but it's okay. Progress is better than perfection. Progress is showing you that you can and you will and you should. So that, my friend, is the message for today. What are you hiding? What are you waiting for? And what will you do about it? Thank you so much for listening to this episode. It truly means so much to have you here as a listener. Do me a favor. If you love the show, can you press the subscribe button? If you're listening to the show on iTunes, you'll see right below the subscribe button. If you give that a press every single time a new episode is released, you will get notified and it means so much to me. Also, if you can take just a couple of seconds and drop a review in in iTunes, that also helps the show so much. It helps people find the show and it allows us to continue to put out new episodes. And as always, my dear friends, come hang out with us in the secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group. Lots of awesome and important discussionings happening inside. Hope to see you there. Until next time, all my love, Jen Glantz. Hey you, thank you for listening to the You're Not Getting Any Younger podcast. There are hundreds of thousands of pods out there, so thank you for listening to this one. You can find the show notes for this week's episode up on our website, anyyounger.com. Subscribe, rate, and review that you're not getting any younger podcasts on iTunes so that other ears around the world can listen to. Oh, and join our secret You're Not Getting Any Younger Facebook group, where over 1,000 people are talking about how to disrupt their lives for a good reason, to make it count. Until next week, all my love, Jen Glantz.